Hey, what's happening? My name is D, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about books and series that I've DNF'd. But before we get into that, um, there's a couple at the end of this list that I DNF'd for pretty heavy reasons. So trigger warning for essay of minors. I'm going to put the time codes like right here, something like that. So you can skip that part um, if you're if that's you know, something that you don't want to hear about, talk about, because it's triggering for you or, or whatever. I guess that's also kind of a spoiler for the video, but, you know, I don't want anybody triggered and, and like, harmed because of my videos, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, do what you got to do. Keep yourself safe. Moving on. So, number one on this list is, I, I don't know what the series is called, but it's the series, um, book one is called Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. So it take it takes place in this fictional country called Orisha, and you know it's this it's this country that used to have a bunch of magic, and there were two classes of people like people who had magic and people who didn't, and then magic like disappeared, and this girl who is a diviner that's the a diviner that's the class of people who could do magic decides that she wants to go on this quest to bring magic back and liberate her people. You know, it's, it's a good, it's a good story about like classism and class struggle and monarchy and government and stuff like that. And, you know, I thought that this world was really cool. I thought the magic system was really cool because all the different diviners have powers based on which god they're descended from so there's some that can control fire control metal uh like raise soldiers like undead soldiers and all kinds of other cool stuff that i, I don't quite remember because it's been a while since i read this i thought it was solid you know i didn't think new ground was really being broken right i could see this being a show or a movie or something apparently like this being produced by there's a movie being produced by fox but who knows especially with the i think I, th I think the writer's strike is over, but I think the actor's strike is still going. Like, SAG is still going, right? And then I read the second one, and I'm not going to spoil the ending, but this, like, crazy twist cliffhanger ending at the end left me feeling so, like, there was no resolution. And not in, like, a, you know, the good guys lost kind of way, but in a, like, they kind of clear the board all together and we're going to deal with something new and like all those fights that were being culminated over two books are just kind of washed away. And I was so mad. And some people would love an ending like that and think that that's really interesting. And they'd be so excited to read the third one. But I was like, nah. So yeah, I don't know if the third book is out or if it's coming out. But if it is, I'm not going to touch it because I'm, I'm done with this series. I really hate it when you know, this might have been a good hot take to have in my hot takes video, but I, I hate it when book two ends on a cliffhanger because sometimes you got to wait for so long before book three comes out. And even like when I have the whole trilogy, like um, like I was given the box set of uh, the Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab. And even when book two ended on a cliffhanger and I had book three like laying right next to me, I was still like, man. Come on. I like it when a series has like complete stories within it that build to a bigger story. And so cliffhanger, like a book two cliffhanger is bad enough. But then when it's such a jarring one, I'm like, nah, I'm not continuing. But, you know, if you love the series and you're like waiting on bated breath for book three of this series, um, good for you. Like this is dope. The next on this list is another series that I didn't finish, won't finish. I don't think it's it's completed yet, but I won't finish it. It's the Ending Fire Trilogy by Sarah L. Arifi. The first book is called The Final Strife, and the second book is called The Battle Drum. And the premise is, you know, there's this empire. Um, you know, I'm just going to look it up one sec. Red is the blood of the elite of magic of control. Blue is the blood of the poor, of workers, of the resistance. Clear is the blood of the slaves, of the crushed, of the invisible. Silent dreams of days grown up in the resistance, being told that she would spark a revolution that would free the empire from the red-blooded ruling class's tyranny. That spark was extinguished the day she watched her family murdered before her eyes. Anur has been told she's nothing, 
no one, a disappointment by the only person who matters, her mother, the most powerful ruler in the empire. But when Sila and Anur meet, a fire burns between them that could consume the kingdom and their hearts. Hassa moves through the world unseen by upper classes so she knows what it means to be invisible. But invisibility has its uses. It can hide the most dangerous of secrets, secrets that can reignite a revolution when she joins forces with Sila and Anur. Together, these grains of sand will become a storm. As the Empire begins to set trials of combat and skill designed to find its new leaders, the stage is set for blood to flow, power to shift, and cities to burn. This story is really cool, and I love the world that it's set in. The magic system is really interesting. It's it's like sort of like a blood-based magic system. I like how queer-affirming this book is. Like, There's a ton of trans characters. So there's a lot of really cool conversation about class. The politics are, like, I guess, creative or just really well thought out, which is, you know, kind of rare for what I think is a YA fantasy, which is no shade. Like, I, I read a lot of fantasy, and I think a lot of it's been YA since I've started getting more involved in, like, booktube and book talk. I'm just saying that some YA fantasy authors don't think the politics all the way through. The fact that it's so thorough in this book is really impressive. I just really can't stand Sila and Anur. Mostly Sila. Like, um, I get why she is the way that she is, but I don't like her and I can't root for her. So I got like a little bit into the battle drum. I don't I don't even think I can count it as a DNF. I was just like, I, I can't with her. So I put it down and I, I won't continue the series because I guess like as much as I want to see what happens with the cities or like with the with the world and how where things get left off, um, I don't really want Sila to have anything to do with it. So whatever. I felt bad for Anur, although she was kind of annoying as well. But it was mostly Sila. I was like, I can't with you. So yeah, I'm not continuing with that series, and I did not finish it. Won't finish it. Next on my list is Stone Blind by Natalie Hayes. This is a like a feminist retelling of the Medusa myth. I got this at Daunt Books in Notting Hill in London. And I was like, oh, this will probably be really cool. Um, and I should have read like the author's quotes on it because there's one from Margaret Atwood and there's one from Neil Gaiman. And like, I don't care about either one of those authors. So that should have been a hint that maybe this wouldn't really be my vibe. And I got like 169 pages in. Like I still have the bookmark in it. Um, And I just couldn't muster up the energy to finish it. I'm a mood reader. And so like the vibe was off. But I, I think I might hold on to this book and, and come back to it at some point. I think that other people could probably really get into this. But I don't know. It was just kind of... I guess I was just bored. Next on my list is The City That We Became by N.K. Jemisin. This one's really interesting. Um, it, I guess it's it's set in a world that's our world, but cities have souls. And major cities pick like an acolyte to um, represent it. And, they, and you get like powers if you're this acolyte or whatever. And New York uh, is so big that... F the five boroughs each get its own acolyte and they make up New York. And then there's this like creature from another dimension that comes to try to destroy the, the city and eat the city or something like that. And um, yeah, I so I have the paperback copy, right? But I first tried to read this via audiobook. And the audiobook has like really cool sound design things you know like voice modulation background music and i hated it i hated it so so much took me right out of the story i couldn't get into it it was too weird for me like nk jemison is is pretty out there and i think maybe i'm not like smart enough to get her and i added like sound design just pushed me over the edge and i was like yo fuck this man like i i read via audiobook at work a lot and i think <laughs> Um, I was listening to this and I got to the point where Manhattan encounters the creature that's trying to eat New York or whatever. And um, I got so weirded out. I like took my headphones out and just kind of threw them on the ground. And my boss was looking at me like, are you good? It was pretty funny. I'm, I, I'm holding on to this copy and I'm going to come back to this book at some point in my life because I think that reading it in silence without those added like vocal effects and shit i can probably get into the story and care about what's happening but just um yeah the sound design i don't like sound design in my audiobooks really i don't like music 
Um, that's really only come up once before with a poet that I really like. His whole catalog is uh, it's accompanied by these like lo-fi beats or whatever, and it's a little less jarring than this, the city we became. But I still don't like it. Okay, and this is the part I was talking about before. Trigger warning, essay of minors. If that's not something you want to hear about, you know, skip ahead. Here's the time code again. Skip ahead. So the next on this list is Fledgling by Octavia Butler. I was so excited to read this because all I was told about it was Black Vampire Book. I don't know what this says about me, but when I was like 16 or 17, my punk rock bassist girlfriend got me to watch and read Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. And I was like so into that franchise for a little bit. I haven't seen the new show because I'm, I'm not as into it. But I still thought like, oh, Black Vampire, that would be so cool. And then it turns out that this vampire looks like she's like 11 or something. And she has like two sexual relationships with adults. And, and sure, technically, this vampire is like 53 years old. But she doesn't look 53. And it's super fucking weird. And I don't know why that needed to be in there. Like, you could have had everything but the relationship with this with this character, and it, it probably would have been fine. I don't know. I didn't get that far because I was like, wait, what's happening? And then I just stopped reading it. I was, why? Why? What possible reason could you have for this? And, and like, I'm sure there's a commentary being made that... I'm not smart enough to understand, but it made me stupid and uncomfortable. I just don't want to read it. I, I think I've mentioned that before. That's something I, I don't want to read, and I wasn't cool with it. It made me so angry, and I I was I, I was so... <clears throat> and the last one on this list is Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. This bounty hunter who is just called Tracker, and this uh, mercenary who is a leopard who can change into a man go on a quest to search for like a missing child or something. I tried to read that book three times and I could never get past how gruesome it was. And then the third time I did sort of get used to the gruesome violence. Like I was like, okay, that's grotesque and disgusting. I'm going to move right along. Um, but again, there's a scene where Tracker goes to a brothel and visits a little boy. What the fuck? Why are we doing this? And then there was another scene with a different little boy and like a giant or something. What the fuck? Why? What the fuck? That's all I can say. I was like, this is deranged. And like, look, if you love that book or something like that, I don't, I don't care. I've posted about this before on TikTok where it's like, I'm just not ever okay with like writing a story about like the protagonist being involved in like essay of minors or whatever. I think there's like kind of one exception where, you know, sometimes I think that if the protagonist has gone through that and you're doing a commentary or whatever, that could, that that's like my, that's where I'm like, okay, yeah, but I still don't really want like graphic descriptions and I still don't want to like I don't want to read that shit right so yeah uh three of the six books or series on this list um I didn't finish them or I'm not going to continue with the series but I'm glad that they exist and I think that they're good they're just not like for me right we've talked about that before um you know I'm not part of the demographic that that like I'm not part of the author's intended audience and so I, I'm really glad that those exist and I'm glad that they're well received and they're well loved because those people need to be represented because a lot of these books I think are YA fantasy and they feature like young black women and I think that young black women need to be elevated and need to see themselves in all forms of media. So I'm hyped for those books and I'm glad that they're out there. One of them just did like a, a storytelling pet peeve thing of mine so now I'm being petty and another one just one for me and another one I'm not smart enough to get. Stoneblind is just boring and the last two are gross.
and you won't change my mind on that, so don't try. And if you've read any of these books or series, I would love to know your thoughts on them. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to the end. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. I do like mainly book reviews, and I'm sort of branching out into more bookish content, you know, pretty standard booktube type of stuff. If you want to support the channel, support what I'm trying to do here, you can tip me slash buy me a coffee. And if you want to support the channel on a more regular basis and gain access to exclusive content not found anywhere else, make sure you subscribe to my Patreon. I just set it up and on there you're going to get two exclusive videos per month. That's uh, the Shadow and Bone reactions moving over there, as well as an extra book review and, and maybe, we'll, maybe we'll review something a little steamy. I don't know yet. We haven't decided. And you also gain access to the exclusive Discord server, the Don't Fret Club Discord server right now. It's me, my two best friends, and one other person, but we're having a good time talking over there. I wanted to make sure while this content is exclusive, it's still pretty accessible, so the lower tier is pretty cheap. It's like three bucks Canadian, and the next two tiers get you like listed in the credits and get a verbal shout out from me at the end of videos. So if you want to support the channel and enable me to do more of this, make sure you consider subscribing to my Patreon. And also, I got, I got to write the whole thing down at some point, but... um. I don't have a merch store just yet. Like, I haven't figured out how I want to do that. But when I do, um, patrons will get, like, an exclusive discount code to, like, my merch store. So that's another thing to consider. Anyways, that's the whole thing. Thank you so much for watching. My name is D. Don't fret. I'll see you next time. Peace out.